Hello, and a warm welcome to Dodger's Trips. Hello, I'm Dodger, and today I'm in Wyke, and this will be episode six of a series of circular walks, beginning and ending, obviously, in Wyke. Now, High Fernley Road is bisected by Woodside Road behind me, um, but we're taking the top half of High Fernley. And we're going to walk down to some ancient woodlands. Now, it's a bit of a horrible day today. Sleet is just starting to fall. It's only one degrees, so... But anyway, the visibility won't be that great. But hopefully we can still get some enjoyment from the woods. And the walk. Today I've got a ghost story for you. And we're also going to learn about a lady whose name is synonymous with the woodland that we're going to be passing through. Now one thing that I enjoy about walking around Wyke are the huge number of sort of terraced and cottage properties that can be found. Yeah, we have a couple of council estates, we have some sort of new developments of modern houses. Now, someone of my age I consider anything built from the 1960s onwards to be modern uh, but apart from those there's a huge number of Victorian terrace properties and small and large co cottages dating back to the sort of 17th century so as I say they're the parts of white that I like walking around the most because they're always more interesting quirky each each house a little bit different from the other one they've all got their individuality bit of a personality now this this property coming up on the right hand side is um, a, a new build but it's been very nicely done and it's a lovely location obviously it's been built with its surroundings in, in you know to, to mind and it's been tastefully done and it's not uh, like an eyesore it just blends in nicely to the surrounding countryside uh, as you can see a uh, lovely house can't imagine there's going to be that many people out on this Monday morning not in the weather that's been forecast. There's a coal bell returning apparently. Here we have a look at a farmyard. I see a horse in there called Oscar. Again, look. Lovely. Lovely cottages full of character. And the old farm barn no doubt this fine looking property coming up on the right hand side is High Fernley House and as grand as it kind of looks today when it was built in 1698 for William Richardson it was known as High Fernley Hall and was a much larger property now William went on to marry Mary Kershaw of Brig House and by way of uh, celebrating their, their new life together at the hall, the initials WR and MR and the date 1698 were incorporated into the stonework above the main doorway. The hall passed through many uh, owners throughout the centuries and today it is privately owned, so I won't loiter too long outside here um, for, for that reason. But... There is a bit of a uh, ghost story attached to this old house. In the 18th century, a family called Beavers lived at High Fernley Hall, and there were two brothers who were besotted by the same girl. Now, only one of them could marry uh, the girl, um, and records show that on May the 4th, 1742, a daughter of Richard Beaumont married a John Beavers, M.D. 
at Kirkeaton Church. Now, according to legend, the other brother, known only as Captain Beavers, witnessed the marriage, putting on a brave face as he did so. He then returned home to High Fernley Hall, where he told his servants that some misfortune was going to happen to him and that he would reappear without his head. <clears throat> to help fulfil this prophecy, he then rode off and committed suicide by somehow severing his own head. There are no reports of it ever having been found, but every night afterwards he appeared at the hall in the guise of a headless horseman. The ghost, known as Beaver's Bat Head, continued to appear each night on his horse in a room known as the Captain's Room. It was all too much for the rest of the family, and they quit the hall, leaving it to stand empty for years. Nobody wanted to occupy the old hall, and none dared to walk or ride past it at night for fear of encountering the Headless Horseman. In 1876, a local historian, William Cudworth, reported that there used to be an old, old oak staircase and gallery that led to a wing, which by that time had been demolished. It was in this area of the hall that there was the apartment known as the captain's room, and apparently the demolition reduced not only the size of the hall, but also got rid of the ghost and made the place habitable again. As for the ghost of the Headless Horseman, it is said that each Halloween, hooves can be heard thundering along the tracks of nearby Judy Woods. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghost of Beaver's Barthead rushing up High Fernley Road towards the old hall. There we are. <laughs> if, you <laughs> yeah, if you ever come in here at Halloween, just listen for the sound of the hoof beats. This is quite a steep road to go down. Thankfully, it's not icy underfoot, so um, you know, it should be okay. You can see the, the far-reaching views that can be had from High Fernley Road. Although it's low cloud cover today, you can pinpoint uh, Emily Moore TV mast. Not sure if you can see that. Just beyond the fence there. And to the left is, is Castle Hill in Huddersfield. Looking back slightly behind me, you can see the Church of St Mary's, which is on Green Lane in Wake. The, the, farm, the, the fields either side of me now are generally kept as paddocks for horses. We've got a stable block here, and I think lower down the farm is, I think it's White Woodside Farm. Now, when, when I youngsters were kids, we used to come down and, like many others, I guess, feed feed the horses. But there are signs signs up now, you know, not to feed the horses, because like humans, you know, the the, the stomachs and, and what have you don't always work as well as they might, and they can be allergic to things or it can cause a reaction. And I guess the cost of vet bills is that extortionate they don't encourage people to feed the horses so we've got this the sleets really starting to open up now we're often at the bottom of this 
uh, dip in the road. There's, there's like a l little ford appears, but thankfully not not today. Well, these GoPro cameras are supposed to be waterproof, uh, let's down to I don't know, a few metres. So we're we'll going to be testing the qualities today. More cottage, as you see. And this is the farm on the left, which uh, has all the horses. I've only seen one horse out in the in the paddock, so we must all be stabled up this morning. There we are. Please do not feed the horses. Got my best uh, walking boots on today because we're going to be hitting some boggy sections. We've had a lot of rain really since before Christmas. I hope you're all keeping well anyway and uh, thank you for joining me on this walk. I'm guessing many of you will know the route and will have done it many times and maybe there's others of you who used to live in Wyke and haven't been this way for quite some time. So maybe you'll enjoy having a, a look at how things are now. This little section of High Fernley Road became quite a hot spot really for abandoned vehicles and burnt out vehicles who used to be driven into the woods and they just, you know, were a danger, obviously not very sightly, so a barrier was put in place and that seems to have stopped the problem. What was that? <laughs> uh, the headless horseman strikes again. It's like a bit of a collapsed dry stone wall there. There is a group called uh, we're entering this woodland anyway, uh, in a few few metres time. It's actually the third largest expanse of woodland in the Bradford district. And if you think that the Bradford Metropolitan District is actually the fourth largest in, in the UK, so that tells you the size of the woodlands that we're, we're entering. And we're so lucky in Wyke to a neighbouring woodside to have these woods on his doorstep because within five or ten minutes of wherever you live, you can just disappear and look, I'm here. Surrounded by woodland, old track, and nobody in sight. So I mean, it's a popular place for, for dog walking, obviously. But yeah, really lucky to have this. The woods themselves, they're known locally as Judy Woods. But in actual fact, they're uh, sort of a collection of, of, I think it's four or five different woods, all under other names like Royds Hall Wood, Old Hannah Wood, uh, low, low wood, for example, and you won't actually find the name Judy Woods on many maps. 
certainly your ordnance survey I don't know about. I'm glad it's been called Judy Woods. Good morning. You got a right morning for it, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, so the, the the woods are known locally as Judy Woods. And that came about because there used to be a lady who lived in the woods. I'm, I'm going to walk down now to the location of where her cottage and where she used to live and, and do business. So uh, we're just coming here to the end of this section and this is the old pack horse trail. I'm not sure, I think there's an information board somewhere on in the woods uh, describing it. It may be a, been a route between Bradford and uh, Halifax which well, covered in leaves at the moment so you just got to be careful where we step when you can when you see the the services of this section of the of I Fernley Road uh, you can sort of see the the stone stone steps in the stone there uh, sets in place but pretty pretty worn out these days uh, obviously not 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 kept up um, so what I was saying is that there's a there's a group called friends of Judy Woods and they do some great work in in maintaining the woodland on a, on a voluntary basis I've got another dog walker out, another brave soul. Morning, only the br only the brave coming out this morning. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, just coming down here now to the the bridge. Now, it's known as Horse Close Bridge, but also known as Judy Brig, after this lady called Judy. Uh, most people in Wyke have heard of Judy North, the old lady who lived in the woods. And there's a bit of an information board here. So it says, near to this site stood the cottage of Judy North from whom these woods take their name. The North family had a pleasure garden which occupied part of the field to your left in the mid 1800s. A pear tree from which the pear tree pub in Norwood Green supposedly takes its name grew next to her house. Judy sold ginger beer, parking pigs and sticks of spice to visitors, hence her nickname Sticker Judy. When she died in 1870 the gardens were broken up and the house demolished. So. So these are the fields just uh, all overgrown at this time of year but it's in those gardens here adjacent to the bridge that uh, Judy North would would uh, and you know sell sell a produce to, to visitors just got a little bridge here So there, are, there has been some geophysical, I think is the term, archaeology, archaeological surveys done of the field and they've been able to determine exactly the location of the gardens and, and the cottage cause, and the cottages because there was more than one cottage. Now Judy, she married, she married Joseph North and, and this was um, he, her third marriage um, she'd been twice widowed pr previously and Joseph North's family had lived in these cottages for, for, for years at the bridge. The adjacent pleasure gardens had been run by the, the North family. Now Joseph died in 1850 and during the 1850s and 1860s Judy lived here and this is when she would sell the spice sticks, parking pigs and homemade ginger beer to visitors. Now the beauty, the, the woods at that point point in time, sort of mid-Victorian era, 
onwards um, became a local beauty spot and families would come out on a Sunday to enjoy the pleasures of the woodland, take a break at Judy's Cottage and have some, some beverage. Now John, um, John um, Barraclough, who was Judy's son from her first marriage, joined her here at the cottages and he ran a greengrocery business. So Judy died in, on the 20th of March 1870 and is buried in Holy Trinity Churchyard in Low Moor. So you might ask, well, how, when did, you know, the woodland that's never been known on any maps as, as Judy Woods uh, come, to, come to get the moniker that's, that it's known by now and if anybody mentions Judy Woods they know exactly what, what you're talking about. Wow, this is a proper wintry scene, isn't it? Look how beautiful. Yeah, so around the turn of the 20th century, a writer published a, a, a number of volumes and he mentions Judy in some of these books. And the, from the popularity of those books, that's how the, the, the woods started to become known. People took an interest in, in Judy North and, and, and what she did living in the cottages in these woods, which people like to visit. And that's when the woods were adopted with her name to become Judy Woods. So yeah, that's the, the site of the, the cottage. Hopefully, you know, one day it might get marked out and people can get a, a better idea. The woods have never dwindled in, in popularity, just as popular now as they were in Victorian times. And it's a real escape from modern day life, I guess, to come for a walk through here, have a picnic, just as they did in the Victorian times. Just got out looking at this scene here, with the bridge, stream, and the snow now starting to fall. Really nice. Okay, so that, that was a little bit of a detour to come down to the site of Judy's Cottage. <coughs> what I'm going to do is from the bridge, if, we, if you continue over the bridge and, and up the hillside, it leads you to the village of Norwood Green. So, what I'm going to do is, is head back up this track there's actually a, a, a more smoother um, path to the right of the dry stone wall, so we, we'll take that. Yeah, the friends of Judy Woods, who I keep sort of name dropping and then getting distracted, they do a lot of good voluntary work maintaining the footpaths, the walls, and also, um, part funded, um, a series of QR markers. There's eight in the woods, and if you scan those, it'll take you to a web page from various websites. Here we are, by coincidence. There's one of the QR codes. <coughs> yeah, and it'll give you information where you are in the woods and a little bit of history, no doubt. Well, just a bit of a steep climb here to get back onto the, the woodland trail of our walk today.
Yeah, so here's another QR marker and an information tablet. So it was a pack road that we just walked down and up. So I knew Jagger was an ancient English surname. What it's saying here is that the, the person who led a group of pack horses was called a Jagger. So one of the woods, as I say, it's Judy Woods, is a conglomerate of lots of different individual woods, but they're all merged into one. One of these is clearly Jagger Wood. There you go. It doesn't actually say if it's a, a, a main route or anything between Halifax or Bradford. It's nice when you walk along because you can still hear the sound of the stream over to your right. <coughs> like I, mean, I don't know if you've seen the Harold Park Daily Mile video that I did recently and I talked in there about the simple pleasures that you can have and that they're often the best the ones that cost no money and coming to Judy Woods has always been a favourite with kids kids love it, climbing the tree stumps going down to the streams and we'd often bring a picnic as well on nice days and you could spend all day in the woods we'd go down to the stream and have uh, boat races with, with sticks and also you could make bows and arrows out of the, the twigs and have a game of cowboys and Indians yeah, all, all for no money so obviously we when you've got young children, you don't have a lot in the pot. So going to parks, recreation grounds, and these woodlands, great three days out, and kids love it. What I want to do is sort of head over to the, the tree line over there. <clears throat> the paddle of leaders around. And if you're watching this from your front room, I hope you're keeping warm. You can afford to keep warm and you keep them well. Maybe put this walk on a, a TV in your living room and walk it with me on the treadmill. Snow seems to be easing off a little bit now. And it's actually not that cold. I looked at the forecast before I came out and it wasn't due to sort of sleep until later on in the day, so anyway, it caught, caught me out a little bit there. But that's one of the, that's one of the joys of living in Britain for me, is that, you know, the weather's always changing. It's not month after month after month of rain or month after month of darkness or light or <coughs> sunshine even. You don't have to wait long in this country for the weather to change. If you don't like it, just wait a week and it'll change again. It's been recorded somewhere that the oldest trees in Judy Woods are about 300 years old. Now the area one always um, for pleasure, for taking a, a Sunday stroll. <coughs> it was, it was a working area, and the areas around Wyke 
and indeed in the woods were covered with pits and coal mining was the, the occupation and uh, the industry that thrived in, in this woodland. There's a number of, sort of, I think a couple of sort of normal regular pits in the, in, in, in the woodland area. And there's also, they did um, pit, pit um, bell mine it, bell, bell pit, they had bell pits and there's bell pits or the remains of a bell pit. Now that was like a circular area that they dug down and then dug outwards from there. And you can still see the remains of where the roof has collapsed on these bell pits. And I believe there's a, a marker against, against uh, one of those a little further on in the walk. We're not going that far this morning. Squirrel there just shooting up the tree. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of wildlife to be seen in the woods, as you'd expect. And, I know there's, there's bat walks take place here. You can come and view the, the bats on an evening. It's not a really long walk today because we're taking a bit of a shortcut um, because I wanted to show you something which I only discovered a week or two ago. I walked on the ground loads of times and I've always looked at it and I thought that's a little bit of an odyssey but I, you know I could never sort of think beyond that of, of what why it was like it was and what it might have been but now I know so we're not so far away from that spot just a, a little bit of an incline here as we may make our way to the uh, the tree line, we're going to be cutting across the, one of the fields that belongs to Woodside Farm, which we walked past at the beginning, where they had all the horses. Now, if you want a, a longer walk, you can take a right here and that'll take you down to Station Road. That was where the old White Station used to be. And it's along there that you find remains of uh, the bell pits. But we're gonna continue up here. There's a, little, there's a, a bit of a sort of style crossing point. I said the snow stops, it's coming on again. Here we are. Let's get over. As we go here, just following my hand there, you can see that the ground is sort of cut out on that side. <coughs> and this, where the, it's a sloping field, this part is level. And this is the bit of oddity that I've often wondered about. So it continues right on. And this is linked to the coal mining that was done in the woods. Just look over there, that's the farm. Yeah, so it's linked to the coal mining. And what it is, this going up here <coughs> on a level, back down to the woods on the level, was the site of a wagonway, a railroad, in other words. And it was operated by a static steam engine. And it would, use, it would haul 
wooden hoppers for transporting the coal from out of the woods up here. And a lot of the coal was used by the Lomo Iron Company. So there we are. If you, like myself, ever wondered what this strange little bit of flattened track The story behind it, there you are, now you know. Oh, the wind, the snow is getting a bit, a bit more wild. Yeah, no, I see plenty of horses about. Sensible, not like me, they're staying in. I just speed up this little section of the walk until I get to the top. Rooftops all getting covered in snow. Must be mad. <sighs> there we go. Made it. So just take a look back. You can see that track out, you know. <coughs> so, a railway line running to the woods. Apparently it wasn't the only one either. Still it's great. So we're only five minutes away from Hawaii. Even the centre away, and yet we're out in countryside. People have this <coughs> uh, opinion or thoughts about Bradford being, you know, the mills and sort of dark and depressing place, but actually, 70% of the Bradford metropolitan district which I say is the, the fourth largest in the country, 70% of it is open rural space. I think it goes as far north as Skipton. You've got Ilkley on one side, and here in Wyke, we're sort of the southern border with Kirklees and Calderdale. This part, of, there is a little section where you can walk right along the fence which is a little bit drier. This part usually gets boggy even in summer. It's, it's used by horses and the tenters, you know, stand against the bushes there. But we're coming to the end of the, the sort of countryside section of the walk. We're just gonna take one of them little ginnels that I love and that'll bring us on to like a, a, a residential area. I was a postman once upon a time and uh, I took a turn at doing a round that included this development. And it was very, very early on. I think there's only about three or four houses built. Now it's quite a, quite a vast estate. Let's just go over this.
Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So, yeah, here's a little gimmel. Takes us from the field out into this estate, which is called the Hudson. You say when I was a postman, I did a delivery one one time around here. There was only a few houses built, <coughs> and it was just sort of this block of houses were the first to be built. And what I remember is that it was the developer and his family who occupied these first few houses. And I think they even had an indoor swimming pool in the very first one there, back there. So, it's, uh, it's come on since then. Got another little ginnel to look forward to here as well. They're all over like. I hope you can see through on the camera. Kids will be liking this when they come out of school. Here we are. So we're just going to go out the side of this sort of industrial uh, business premises. Quite a good bathroom showroom here. I don't know if anyone's been in it. We've got our bathroom suite from there in an old house. Roy Waterhouse, it's called. Well, here we are emerging onto this is Huddersfield Road, this section. There you are. Like what house showroom. It's a bit of a strange one, Gus. The main road where we started was Woodside Road, and that comes down to the junction where the car's just pulling out now. And the road that emerges from there is Huddersfield Road. So although Woodside is the dominant road. Yeah, it's it's uh, Uddersfield Road which comes out and joins onto Woodside Road and then this becomes Huddersfield Road. So yeah, a bit of a quirky thing that the main road stops being Woodside Road at that point and then continues being Huddersfield Road, a continuation of that side street there. That'll be no doubt because the old that was the old road through the village. Uh, Huddersfield Road and then subsequently they've built the, this like bypass I guess because this is the main route between Huddersfield, Brighouse and on to Bradford just going to crank across the road and then we'll finish on the other side When we first moved to Wake, our cat got killed around this spot and we found it actually in them bushes. That's a long time ago now, a few decades. Now just behind these bushes <coughs> used to stand the old Wake library. Yeah, you can't get through now. To fence it off. Well, yeah, that was demolished, and the, the library uh, now sits in Appleton Academy, which is like the big school in Wyke. Your kids can go there from nursery right through to age 18. Although it's not the only primary, there are other primary schools in Wyke. Now, this building here is fairly new, not sure, two or three years old, maybe not even that. It's Wyke Wood Complex Care Home. 
and they look after people who need a lot of care people with brain injuries, spine injuries, people with dementia <coughs> the other side of the road is Appleton Academy which I mentioned again fairly new building although it's huge it's been done tastefully I think the way it lays it, it, it it's not a, an obstruction to the site of it, it sort of fits into the surrounding fields if you see it from here it's probably a six sort of highest point from the other side you've got the sort of fields and everything and it, the building diminishes so we're very close to the end of the walk turned out a little bit differently didn't it weather wise than I was thinking thought I might get away with it but it's nice to have something a little different than a sunny day so just where the traffic lights are is almost at the point where we started the walk another shot a uh, row of terraced houses So, I love you and leave you, hope you've enjoyed it and that you can join me on the next film, wherever that might be. Here we are, start, starting point, over the road, let's get across that big puddle, there we are, so over the road, that's where we started. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, dodger and out.